High in the Andes Mountains, in the ruins of an Incan city, the mighty Thor, god of thunder, lies battered and unconscious. Only moments ago, he fought the greatest battle of his tempestuous life and lost. Now he rests, oblivious to all but the numbness that has overtaken him in the arms of the ageless Earth Goddess who revealed herself to be his long-lost mother. Sleep, valiant son. Do not feel the wounds you have incurred for the sake of all who live, and know this, that there are none who fought more courageously than you, none of whom I am more proud. The events that concluded this day began scant years before with the landing of the Fourth Celestial Host, an expedition of ten unimaginably powerful aliens from beyond known space. Their purpose was to judge whether mankind, whose genetic development they had directed in ages past, had proven itself worthy of continued existence. Learning of their arrival, Odin, the supreme god of Asgard, sent his immortal spirit from his body to animate the dread Destroyer, a nigh-invulnerable metallic warrior Odin had constructed a millennium ago for the sole purpose of combating the Celestials should their verdict be nay. Once within the Destroyer, the Allfather gathered to himself the life essences of every god in the Golden Realm, life essences that in his divine wisdom he had distributed at the dawn of the age. Growing to gargantuan stature, the Destroyer seized the awesome Odin Sword, an enchanted blade that contained the deadliest power in all Asgard. Armed for battle, the Destroyer descended to Earth, at its side flew the uncanny Unimind, a group intelligence made up of the Celestial's former earthly servitors, the Eternals. With a single searing blast, the Unimind was disintegrated into its component parts. While the Destroyer leaped into the fray, savagely striking the enigmatic aliens who surround it. But even the greatest weapon of the gods was no match for the Celestials. In a paroxysm of cosmic energy, they destroyed the Destroyer, setting adrift the life force of all Asgard. Thor, the only god not in Asgard at the time of the gathering, witnessed his people's demise with rage and threw himself into the conflagration to avenge his perished people. Wielding the power of the elements, Thor struck with power enough to level mountains but the Celestials withstood his futile bombardment. Finally, with the last vestige of his godly might, Thor hurled the fallen Odin sword, embedding it in the chest of Ereshem, leader of the fourth host. But Ereshem simply withdrew the sword from his impervious form, and after analyzing its mystic properties, vaporized it. For Thor, all hope had strayed when suddenly the Elder Goddess of the very world the Celestials sought to judge materialized. Accompanying her were the young gods, twelve chosen mortals who embodied the achievements of the human race. Mother Earth offered the Celestials Earth's finest children in exchange for the world's salvation. After due deliberation, the Celestials accepted the offering and ascended to the heavens, their charges in tow. The Celestials' judgment had been given, Earth shall endure. But although the world had survived its day of judgment, one race of gods had not, save for a single member. Thor, my child, how I have longed to let you know your mother's love, but your father forbade me to see you for fear you would forsake Asgard for Earth entirely. And now we are together. Odin is no more, and you are on the brink of oblivion. To find out what happened next, or for more details on how the story developed, go and check out Thor and the Eternals, the Celestial Saga, available for print on Amazon or digital for Comixology. 